Hello everybody and welcome back to the Spanish Grand Prix Weekend F198 Mod 2020. You get the idea at this point. It's round five. We're here at Catalonia. And yeah, sorry it's been a few days. Uh, just been busy uh, doing commentary and uh, practicing for the Bathurst 12-hour, uh, in, in real life, of course, no, <laughs> uh, in, in iRacing. I wish I was doing it in real life. Uh, that would be the dream. But unfortunately, I don't have a million pounds, so I'm stuck doing it uh, in a pretend race car. So, eh, ups and downs, swings and roundabouts, as some would say. But we are here for the fifth round, and uh, this season's been going well, almost too well. But unfortunately for this round, as you can see on your screen unless you're watching this with your eyes closed. It'd be a bit weird if you are, but if you are, you know, fair enough. Uh, or if you're blind, I should probably shut up now. Uh, we have a grid penalty for this race uh, because our gearbox is made out of Play-Doh. Yeah, not ideal. Uh, we're trying to upgrade at the moment our general wear, but uh, th these upgrades take, you know, too long for the amount of facilities that we have and we just got to kind of make do with uh, what, what we've got at the moment here at Sauber. So, but it's going being, it, it, there, there's been a lot of attrition to say the least. And well, uh, let's hope we can have a bit more competition over the next few rounds, but it's going to be a wet one shot qualifying session. This should be interesting. And as we patiently just wait for the session to get going, we're going to make some setup adjustments to our car. And I've never really known how to fully set up uh, this track, to be honest. I mean, it's never been one of my strong tracks anyway. Um, I don't really know anyone that has a strong point around here. It's just one of those tracks where everyone just kind of gets on with it do you know what i mean it's just not one of those tracks where anyone really enjoys it it's just it's okay uh it's, it's also fairly boring uh because i don't know especially in these older f1 cars there's just nothing special it's, it's fairly low speed a lot of understeer uh but in the wet uh, in this qualifying session it's going to make things a little bit more interesting uh and uh, we'll see where we can line ourselves up on the grid and as we go out on track now to start our flying lap, as you can see, it's only intermediate condition, so it shouldn't be too bad as we head into turn one, looking to break around the 100 meter board in these conditions. Already aquaplaning there into turn one and through turn two. Now into turn three, this corner on these wet tires, just fe it feels so, so long. You're eagerly anticipating to get back on the throttle. Now into the famous corner where Hamilton and Rosberg killed each other. Hopefully there'll be none of that uh, over the course of this weekend as we just again struggle to get the power down. And it doesn't look like our car seems to like the wet conditions very much. But this is the first sprinkling of rain we've had all season. So this is just a taster of what might come later on in the season. But it looks like it's going to be dry for the race. This middle sector is again fairly boring apart from uh, this blind crest of turn nine this is quite a nice corner uh especially in the modern f1 cars it's do or die through there uh this hairpin coming into here it's much better on the modern layout it's a much it's the other layout i believe uh actually no they completely redid that i forgot about that they completely redid that hairpin and it's so much better now heading into this final sector now this long right hand uh, again patient to get on throttle in this this section, infamous, everyone hated it, and it's finally gone in real life, but unfortunately on this game we used to have it, so we've just got to deal with it, and just struggling to get on throttle round uh, the final corner, as we're squirming all over the track, but it looks like it's going to be a P10 start, not too bad at all, but uh, we'd rather hoped to be maybe a little bit further up the grid, but 
first time in wet conditions uh, in a track that, uh, of course, we've not driven yet this season. So, not too bad, I'd say. Uh, we're only about six tenths off uh, a lacy in qualifying. We do definitely seem to be struggling in qualifying, but in the race, we seem to be miles better. So, we just have to get the right balance uh, of everything. But it's Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard lining up on the front row for McLaren. And uh, should be a good race for them. The Spanish Grand Prix has been a permanent fixture on the Formula One calendar for over 30 years now. And for good reason. Do you remember Michael Schumacher's absolute dominance here in that rain-soaked Grand Prix in 1996? That day he took his first ever victory for Ferrari. And we've had many more iconic moments since. The circuit de Barcelona Catalunya then, a high speed 2.89 mile circuit which demands an efficient downforce package and bravery on the part of the driver, especially through the blind right of turn 9 which we might just see taken flat this weekend. And well, here we are sitting in the car, in the usual spot and of course with that grid penalty we are starting in P15 instead of P10. Uh, not as bad as it could have been. Of course, we could have had more penalties and started last, or we could have crashed and started last. So, either way, P15 isn't too bad. And we're going to try and look to make our way through the field. And now we sit waiting for those five iconic red lights to go out. And it is lights out and away we go here in Spain. It's actually a decent start from us for once. And uh, we do not instantly get overtaken. We're the one making the overtaking. Jene Magnussen, our first victim since we head down into turn one. Can we make up a few more past Frensen? He might sneak up back our inside, which he does. Magnussen as well. We just let them go. Not really worth getting involved in too many tussles this early on. And well, it's a decent start. We go in one place as we go super, super wide. On the exit there as we all get super close to the back of Magnuson. But just think better of it. And now coming towards the end of the first sector. Honestly, this heavy car uh, with full fuel just feels like a boat at the start of this race. On medium tyres as well, since the tyre wear is fairly high around here, especially in these traction zones. Uh, so we're just going to try and progress our way up through the field no matter what. And well, one place at the start isn't too bad. But uh, I think we're going to make a few more up by the end of this lap. Can we go for a move on Magnussen into this airfield? We're gaining on him. The Stewart doesn't have amazing straight line speed. Just narrowly avoiding him. He broke super early into there. He's still on our outside, but we just shut the door on him. And move our way up into 13th place. So two places on the first lap is a lot better than we usually do. Uh, unless there's a crash involved, of course. Which, uh, knowing this AI, it probably will happen at some point. But actually, this start has been fairly clean. I'm uh, fairly impressed with the AI round here. Let's hope this trend can continue uh, all the way until the end of the race. Uh, Coulthard, I believe, is the one leading this race. He's absolutely shot away from the rest of the grid. As you can see on the minimap in the bottom left-hand side of the screen. Uh, coming into this happen again, going for a move on France and Anne Hill and Schumacher. Oh, we got so, so close. I'm not sure if we clipped him there. I think we might have done slightly. We have got a warning for making contact. But I think we've just gotten away with no damage. Uh, I, maybe our front right end plate is a little bit damaged. But I don't think it's too much to worry about. Now on the back of Damon Hill. And uh, oh, that's, that's uh, Schumacher and Mika Hakkinen. They've both collided on the exit of turn 9. And that's Mika Hakkinen losing it. And well, what was Michael doing there? Obviously, Mika not very happy with him. Michael should have been disqualified for that. And uh, if you couldn't tell, that was my British sarcasm. And, well, we actually did find out that I believe that contact with Schumacher did give us big front wing damage. Gave us a lot of understeer. And during the safety car, we are going to have to come in and pit for a new front wing. And, of course, go on to the hard tyres. We'll try and go as long as we can, but I don't think we'll be able to go all the way to the end of the race. That's another 30-odd laps on these tyres. That's going to be damn near impossible. Uh, so, we'll try our best, but if an opportunity arises, we're definitely going to change to a different set of tyres. And we've just got to come back through the field from last now. We have got two of the front runners who are out, though, Schumacher and Hakkinen. So, that could push somebody else onto the podium. Maybe a Williams, some Benettons, Jordans, maybe even my teammate. And maybe if we get really lucky, 
uh, we could end up on the podium as we run the final corner, overtaking Rosset almost instantly. The Tyrrells just have nothing straight line speed compared to us. Uh, apologize there, my throat is killing me. Uh, Mika Sullivan seems to be our next target. He gets it all wrong in this middle sector on to turn eight, into turn nine. Get the move done, easy as you like. De La Rosa is now our next target. We're just making our way through the bottom three teams, to be honest, as De La Rosa moves out of the way for us, and we move up into 15th place, back where we started, running the final corner, overtaking Verstappen, because once again, no straight line speed from that serial whatsoever. We just have the OP Ferrari engine in the back of our car, so we're just going to trundle along nicely. And now we've got the two Minardis ahead of us, who seem to be... Oh, that's uh, Jan Magnussen, who's just spun round. You saw that off to the right, but Magnussen's absolutely just binned it. I think he's got going again. Uh, so he should be fine, but he's just uh, spun himself off. And he's going to be right at the back. But the two Minardis seem to be the best of the bottom three teams. As we head up the inside of Nakano, Jene now is the one in front of us. This is going to be for P11. Heading through turn nine. And this should be a textbook move down into the hairpin, and then we've just got to catch up to the rest of the field once again. Around the outside at the 100 meter board, and Jenna is going to give us a run for our money, but it should be fairly easy. But Jenna actually gets a really good exit out of the hairpin, and round this long right hander, we just have the better downforce. Around the outside we go, we're just inching ahead. Jenna is still there. He is still there, and that, that's Eddie Irvine who's out of the race. We're still battling with Jenny. Jenny finally gives up the place, but that's Eddie Irvine who is stopped to the side of the road, and it's yet more Ferrari trouble. The Ferraris have really been struggling for reliability so far. This I think that's a third mechanical retirement. Uh, maybe just for Eddie Irvine. I don't know if uh, Michael's had any, but absolutely atrocious there. It's almost like the modern day. Like, genuinely, they had better reliability back then than they do now. But here we are attacking Frentzen a couple laps later. This is for P9. And, of course, after Irvine has DNF'd from the race, it gives someone else another opportunity to get onto the podium. And that, that was my teammate off to the right side of the track. Frentzen goes back past. And John Alacy has done the same thing that Magnussen did. And you can see there, just no traction on the end of that corner. Seems to be a black spot for the AI. He manages to get going again, avoided the wall, so we might see him later on in this race if there's a safety car. But it just seems like the AI really do struggle on the exit of turn two. We're going to try another move on Frenson, as we did just a few laps ago. Damon Hill in front of us as well. We have to be careful. We go a little bit deep into turn one. He's going to try and overtake and outdrag Frenson. Round the outside of turn three we go. Have the dirty air of Damon Hill in front of us, but we just managed to squeeze ahead and move ourselves up into eighth place. We're making good progress at the moment and um, yeah, should end up with some decent points at the end of this. I think someone's out of the race. That's, uh, I believe that's Frentzen. That's Heinz Howard Frentzen. Again, more mechanical trouble. And oh God, he got awfully close to that Benetton on the pit exit. That was really, really close. But, yeah, just a lot of mechanical troubles for Williams and Ferrari. McLaren seems to be fairly good on reliability as everyone else comes into pit. We move up to second. And on lap 22, then, we do finally decide to come into the pit lane. As these hard tyres have uh, basically given us all they can. And we will be moving on a fresh set of the medium compound. Uh, to hopefully give us a sat little bit of an edge in those final 10 laps. Exit, exit. And hopefully we can grab some good, good points. We're in fifth at the moment, now down to sixth. Uh, but we should be able to pass Barrichello within a few laps. The Stewarts are not very quick at all. Uh, they're probably the fourth worst car. I'd say maybe a bit of a stretch. They're just a tier below Jordan Benetton and Sauber. They're just not quite on the same level as us. And evident just uh, about four laps later we do catch up to Barrichello he goes uh, quite defensive actually but into turn one oh the nice switch back and he's crashed into us he's crashed into us Rubens Barrichello is out of the Spanish Grand Prix and that's a full course yellow full safety car deployed and I don't really feel responsible here I go for the cutback and he just turns in 
completely turns into me, and I don't feel responsible for that at all. I just think Barrichello just misjudged that really badly. And, well, it ended up in, uh, well, tears for the Stewart team. And, well, of course, we haven't decided to come into pit, but there's only going to be three laps left when we cross the start finish line. A lot of blue flags in front of us. Can we end up on the podium? I'd like to think we have a good chance of doing so. We're going to get the slipstream of Jan Magnussen as we head into turn one. Villeneuve seems to be our next target. There's a lot of lapped cars in front of us. Just look at that. There's, oh, we're overtaking all of them. It's a cluster. A word I can't use. Uh, Villeneuve, we're eyeing up. He's going super slow, but we didn't have enough space to make a move there because Rossit was on the inside. So painfully, we're just going to have to sit back. But we are on fresher tyres than everyone else. Coming around the final corner, Villeneuve looks vulnerable. We're catching him. And, well, we're kind of at the top of our rev limiter here. Verstappen's going to make this awkward for Villeneuve, and we make it awkward for him. We've gone a bit deep, though. We've managed to get past, but can we hold on to it? A bit squirmy on the exit of turn two. Oh, this is going to be difficult to hold it. He's still there. He is still holding his line. I'm giving him enough room so this can be a good battle into turn four we go. He is still there. This is side-by-side -side action between me and the Williams. But Filna finally concedes and we move up into fourth place. We have a good opportunity to get on the podium now. And Alex Furtz on the last lap is going to be our best opportunity. He goes defensive into turn one. We're going to try to go deep round the outside but first has stopped in the middle of the apex and we have hit the back of him and we've got front wing damage again in this race we're gonna have to limp this car home and look at the understeer we've got major front wing damage and coming through turn nine we're just gonna have to try and hold off for Vilna for just a few more corners but we've run wide onto the gravel trap and we're round we've spun the car completely the opposite way round and we're going to fall all the way down the order now. All the way to 8th place. Coming back on the track. We've crashed into Nakano. Oh, that's a big accident. Solo Magnussen. I think there's a few other cars involved. There's a Jordan that's just crashed into him. Oh, that was an awkward one. I, I, I don't know if that was my fault. I, And you can see the aftermath. Absolutely huge crash. But... Oh, I don't know if I should feel the guilty one there. I kind of do. It was a bit of an awkward rejoin for me. This is what it looked like from Schumacher. He kind of just accepted his fate and just rammed into them all. But what a giant crash at the end of this Grand Prix. There's a view from the Minardi. And I don't know. I just felt like there was so much room to the right of the track. And he just didn't use any of it. I could have done better there. But he should have as well. So... We'll call that one down to a racing incident. The game didn't give me a penalty, so it clearly agreed. And uh, we, just to rub salt in the wound, we also uh, have run out of fuel on the line. But we're going to finish in P7. Overall, it's it's not a bad result, but what could have been? We were so, so close to a podium. And, well, uh, for our own fault, of course, we made that spin. Ah, uh, what a shame. What a shame. to deliver such an incredible result today. Taking care of the car was absolutely vital today. It's been obvious all weekend that the pace was there, but look at the attrition rate we've had. They would have been very concerned about any minor anomaly towards the latter stages of this Grand Prix. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. Well, that uh, was an awkward end to the race, but I mean, P7 and P10 for the Sauber cars is not too bad. Seven points overall. Uh, in real life, in real life in 1988, we wouldn't have scored any. So, <laughs> um, yeah, wow, what, what an end to the race. And uh, do let me know if you guys think uh, the, that that was my fault. I genuinely would like to to hear what you guys think. I, I don't. I don't feel like I did too much wrong there. I, I, I felt like I gave him more than enough room 
on the right side of the track and he just chose not to use it. But somehow, because of the amount of cars at the top that DNF'd, we still lead the championship. Uh, <laughs> obviously, that won't stay, but, you know, that both Ferraris didn't finish. Mika Hakkinen didn't finish. And Coulthard won the race, so... I mean, obviously, we're going to get overtaken, but it's just a bit awkward, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> we should not be leading at all. It's our first season. We're in a Salba. This is awkward. Our teammate's down in 14th. We're massively overperforming uh, with a lot of luck, and uh, hopefully things will return to normal as the season goes on. But anyway, it's been an absolute pleasure to commentate over this race for you guys uh it was exhausting and this race was really really dull to drive i have to be honest apart from those final few laps but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you all next time for the monaco grand prix see you then